Alrighty guys, welcome back and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use inheritance in ES6. Very easy. Now, I'm guessing that like 95% of you guys already know what inheritance is, but for those few who may not be familiar with it, it's actually really easy to understand. So I'll give you guys like the real quick 30 second overview. So say that I was making a computer game and I wanted to make a bunch of enemies. So I made a ninja enemy and this ninja could move left, move right, and he could attack. So I made three methods in that class. Now, later on, I decided to make like a, I don't know, an astronaut enemy or a wizard. I guess an astronaut's not really a great enemy. So this wizard enemy, he can move left and right and attack. So I made the same methods in there. And then later on, let's say I made the astronaut and he also can move left and right and attack. So basically I had all these classes with duplicate code. It was the exact same code. They could all move left and right and attack. Now my number one rule of software design is never repeat yourself. If you find yourself repeating yourself, then you're probably doing something wrong. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could take all these shared functions, all of this shared functionality, stick it in one base class, and then we can just include it whenever we needed it. Well, that's what inheritance is. Basically making one base class that has functions that you share, and then you can just include those functions rather than typing them over and over and over again. So let's say that in this example, who's texting me right now? Right in the middle of my video. Anyways, let's say that in this little demo right here, I was making a game and this game had a bunch of different types of people, maybe like Sims or I don't know, a computer game, whatever. So it had programmers and it had construction workers and nurses, basically a bunch of different professions. Now, all of these people or all of these professions had some common attributes. They all had a name, they all had an age, and they all had a weight. No matter what profession you are, you all have these same attributes. So instead of just typing this code in every single class, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make this a base class or the parent class, and I can make other classes that inherit from it. So I'll say class programmer, and again, I don't wanna have to type all of this code again, so what I can do anytime I want to include all the stuff in here is I can just use the keyword extend. Now, the class you write after this is saying, all right, go ahead and grab all the code in person and bring it into this class. That's all it does. So now, even though we don't have anything visually to see in Programmer, there actually is all of this code right here. And just to kind of clear things up, you see that this person has a name, an age, and a weight. Instead of just display weight, I'm actually going to make display name and display age. So I'll say display name and uh, might as well type it. I was going to copy it, but let's copy this part. So all I want to do is I want functions to pretty much output their name and age. All right, so even though we can't see it, whenever we make a new object from the programmer class, we can use display name, display age, and display weight since we pretty much took everything from the person class and brought it in using this extends or inheritance. Pretty sweet, huh? Now, there are a couple little things that we need to watch out for. So this parent class or the class you inherit from, it's technically called the super class. So some people say that this is the parent and this is the child, but you can also refer to the parent as the super class. So whenever we set up the constructor in the child class, here, I'll show you guys how to do this. So it's basically similar to the one before, but instead what we want to do is this. Inside the constructor, what we're going to do is we're actually going to call the parents constructor. So how do we do that? We actually use the keyword super. Now the parents constructor, since a programmer is a type of person, essentially we need to create a person still. It takes a name, an age, and a weight. So we can just pass those in right like this. Now additionally to just setting the name, the age, and weight of a person, this 
programmer has an extra attribute and that's language. So I'm just gonna say that a programmer also has uh, their favorite language, which can be like JavaScript or Python or C++ or whatever. So just like before, what we can do is this. So check that out. So actually what I am gonna do is kind of start showing you guys a little demo here. So of course, Sally is just a regular person. She's not a programmer at all. So we know that we can display her name, her weight and her age. So let me just go ahead and run this and verify that all right, Sally has a name, an age and a weight. Looking good. Now, if I make another variable called Bucky, another object, I guess it's more technically called, and instead of just being a person, he is actually a programmer, then what do I need to pass in? Well, I need to pass in a name, an age, and a weight, and also his favorite language. So his name is Bucky Roberts. And what's the next parameter? Age. 87 weight 987 pounds and his favorite language javascript now check this out display age and i'll just do display name and actually let me separate this with a uh, little line so you guys can see what's going on so of course we know that Sally stuff prints out fine, but Bucky's information also prints out fine. Now, if you look inside this programmer class, which Bucky is indeed a programmer, we don't even have the methods display name and display age. So how come Bucky was able to use those? Well, that's because whenever we inherited from person class, it pretty much got all of the methods inside here in this isn't technically how it works, but, but essentially behind the scenes, it pretty much cut them and pasted them right in there or copy and pasted them. I guess it's slightly more technical. And another thing that you can do is you can actually give a programmer um, custom functions as well. So I'll say display language. And I'll say console log pronounce their favorite language. So whenever I run Bucky display language, of course it prints out JavaScript. Now again, only programmers have access to display language, not a person. A person only has access to these three and a programmer has access to those three plus whatever it's in, or excuse me, whatever is in its own class. So that is the basics of inheritance. Again, before ES6, it was super complicated, but thank God for ES6, it makes things really easy. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next video.